Uh, I would like to uh, <clears throat> thank and acknowledge uh, uh, New Chinooth for having me on the indigenous territory and indigenous land here. Uh, thank you, Marika, and everybody for uh, such a wonderful, wonderful gathering. Um, I've, I've never uh, been to any festivals like this, so this is magnificent. And um, I got to get a little bit of time out on the water uh, with Joe, so that was great. I hope that I can get into um, a canoe tomorrow. So um, I don't have a ton of time, so I'm gonna fly through some of these images. Um, uh, my name's Nicholas Glannon. Uh, my Clinket name's uh, Yek Itzin. I'm um, Clinket in Unanga. I'm based in Sitka, Alaska. Uh, this is my home. It's, it's north of here. We um, live on the water too, and we spend a lot of, a lot of the year out subsisting. Um, my relationship to the land is, is really informed on a lot of uh, my work and my music that I make. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's, it really is a big part of, of what we do. This is um, fishing for sockeye. We literally fish maybe 40 feet away from the brown bears. <clears throat> kind of like this with our eyes to the side, keeping our eye on them. But, um, and dip netting, we can, we can get enough um, salmon in, in one day to, uh, let's see if this plays, to feed our family for the year. Uh, <clears throat> so, so definitely grateful and, and have a, a, a deep, deep relationship to um, our, our subsistence and our subsistence harvest and that knowledge. Um, I started out doing jewelry work and wood carving. My father is an artist, uh, my uncle, my great grandfather, uh, they're wood carvers and jewelers as well. Around the time I was 18 or so, I, I went off to school in London to study jewelry design and silversmithing. And when I got to London, they told me uh, I couldn't practice my cultural forms and in their institution because it was too literal for them. So uh, I didn't really know how to process that at the time. I, I kind of just sidetracked and continued um, my next passion, which was jewelry and music. These are rings that you wear, like timbre rings on, when you play guitar with the rhythm of your hand. But it wasn't until I left, left the university there that I, I realized our, our roles and relationships with institutions and culture uh, and the history of that uh, continue today where we're told that we can go into these, these spaces for uh, ideas of opportunity and success in society today, but when we show up at their door, we can't bring our cultural knowledge with us. Uh, and that's really problematic. Uh, it still exists and continues today in a lot of these institutional spaces. So um, a lot of the work that I've created while I was in London that I didn't show my instructors went on further to um, uh, my practice in New Zealand where I worked with Robert Yonke. Uh, the, uh, I did my master's degree at Massey University. Uh, with the Maori visual arts program. I didn't particularly go there to study Maori culture or to create Maori art. I went there to work alongside artists and work with my, my cultural work. Um, while away, I, I found myself reading uh, lots of anthropological text, lots of books, digesting as much as I can about cultural history and knowledge. And um, to me, there is a lot of irony in that, especially uh, based on the fact that a lot of these texts were written by non-indigenous people. Um, th so it was, it was homogenized through Western, a Western lens, I would, I would say. And um, that kind of bothered me because a, a lot of those sources and resources for texts were our elders. And um, that was not validated as knowledge in the Western system until our elders' words are homogenized by uh, oftentimes non-indigenous academics. Uh, so thinking about that, this is where this series, What Have We Become, is uh, spawned from. And these are maybe 2,000 pages of paper cut and bound into books. This is um, the good book uh, featuring Raven and Clinket Culture Raven is used to tell our creation story. And this is uh, created from the Bible. So this is about 2,000 pages 
of um, the Bible cut and bound into our creation story. Um, <clears throat> some of these works, uh, it was my intent to create pieces that were not um, full of our iconography that's often romanticized in indigenous culture. So our material, our visual, our strong, <laughs> Uh, abstract visual language that you see everywhere in our communities. And um, to me, that was freeing away from some of the constraints that the art world and the institution has placed on ind indigenous artists, especially. Uh, but in doing so, I found that it was troubling to connect that work with our elders in our community. So um, I backtracked and started using some indigenous iconography like that raven in the paperwork. This is. Um, 2,000 pages from Under Mount St. Elias, which is an anthropological uh, publication published in the 70s on Clinket culture. I'm gonna just keep flying because I don't have a ton of time here in these videos. I don't have internet to play them. So a lot of the work that I've been creating is, um, creates a dialogue and space for things that um, communities or uh, historians or um, even our history books in our schools don't teach us. And, and so this No Indians Are Dogs Allowed neon series was based on the signs in our community that were um, up in local establishments not too long ago. Let's keep moving. This is uh, somebody took my work for a Bollywood poster and didn't ask me. <clears throat> they took the, the concept. Um, the Imaginary Indian series is an ongoing series that I've been working on that uh, specifically speaks about commodification of indigenous culture. Uh, I, um, initially, I went out and uh, went to a lot of galleries and purchased non-native carved native art. <clears throat> um, so so the, the questions that are raised in, in is, this a, is, this, is this indigenous art something that... Um, Anybody can create? Is it something that you have to be indigenous to um, create? Is it uh, a lot of the commodification of our culture uh, is people taking things from our community that they want choose to, to choose, choose to take without taking responsibility or without caring for the community and without caring for the community's needs, without caring for the, the, um, the people that create those objects historically, the people that have done those. So these are masks created in Indonesia that are sold in the tourist market in Sitka, uh, where I'm from. And I've painted over them um, a wallpaper French toile design <clears throat> uh, that, that was, um, the imagery on the wallpaper is around, it, it's a picnicking and crushing grapes and uh, it's from an era uh, where very opposite was happening on the coast here historically where there was violence and there was genocide and there was removal of children. So, so these are sort of skeletons or ghosts to um, our objects. Uh, this is Raven and the First Immigrant. Uh, it's a chainsaw carved replica of um, Reed's Raven and the First Man. And uh, the, the title is basically, uh, and, I, and I don't necessarily associate colonization as immigration, um, but it's a play on that, what immig immig immigrant means to indig from an indigenous perspective, I suppose. Um, recently I've been doing Indian petroglyphs too. Uh, this is a Indian petroglyph I've created in Alaska and Sitka. Let's see, let me keep moving. Inert. The inability to progress or move forward. Um, to me, the inability to progress um, or move forward, the back half of this wolf is um, representative of uh, what happens when a culture is um, contained by something like um, institution, when a culture is contained by Western um, history books and defined, um, it's safe and it's felted and it can't move. Um, and then the front half of this is, is us right now, our continuum, our, our communities. Um, a, lot of, a lot of Western culture would rather us be in this known uh, quantity, in this known place, but we're free. And um, 
we are able to bite back. Things are looking native, native's looking wider. Our, this is um, pop iconography and appropriation. Uh, I'm gonna keep flying through here. My ears are numb. This was a piece created for John T. Williams, uh, who was um, murdered by a Seattle police officer in Seattle. Um, so this is a drum, and then the, the drumsticks, um, the billy club. So. The American dream is a lie and well. Um, 50 caliber bullets, gold-plated teeth. It's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, this is White Carver. This is an installation piece that I, it's an ongoing installation series. Um, and this is, um, this is the Carver. He read some books on our culture and um, was really inspired by it. So he started to recreate the work. Um, and this is its installation in several different spaces and places. Operation Geronimo. <clears throat> this photo was taken from um, a real estate uh, flyer, the photo in the, in the backdrop there. And I've, I've always been really um, sensitive towards the idea of real estate and uh, the ideas that you can own land. Um, I don't really think that, I think there's a big disconnect in the fact that our relationship to land is not something that we own, it's something that we are part of. And um, these are monograph um, prints. I dreamt I can fly 60 porcelain arrows suspended. Uh, the idea of false powerment, I suppose, uh, empowerment, <clears throat> giving tools, uh, colonial tools to operate in space, um, that's what these arrows are. They're representative of those tools. And when, when you use them, they just shatter. They're they not useful. They don't, they don't provide for our families. They don't defend our communities. They don't uh, do any of those things. Natural resource and space invaders. Okay, I'm gonna keep flying. I have 70 slides here, so um, I think it goes like this. this is, uh, and this is uh, Indian children's bracelet. These are um, children's handcuffs engraved with our forms and images. And the idea of people seeing only our icono icono iconography um, and not being able to look at any of the truths or, or histories that we've had, um, the blindness, I, I call it uh, active amnesia, where you choose not to, to look at certain things in our um, culture's history, but focus on the shining objects. Um, Kill the Indian, save the man. This is um, based on that colonial philosophy. Uh, and this is the saved man on the right. So these are actually just Indonesian masks as well we created. This is a collaboration that I've been working on with an artist named Nep Sidhu, who's from Toronto. Um, we've been doing No Pigs in Paradise gowns, and this is a, a, a new gold face piece that I created for it. Uh, in, our, in our cultures, in our communities, we have monuments everywhere. And a lot of these monuments that are up are people that have, are of people from um, other spaces that oftentimes were violent towards indigenous communities. Uh, so this is a monument my brother and I created for nine Unangan men that were uh, um, shot by uh, Russians when they, were come, when they came through. They tied 12 Unangan up and then shot a bullet to see how far it would travel, and nine men dropped. Um, and so these are, these are actually ballistic gels, and we shot through them, and there's a bullet in the ninth one floating in it. Um, but these are histories and monuments that our communities don't have for our people, and, um, and you don't see that often at all in a lot of the, these um, places. So I think it's important that we continue to tell these stories. 
Your Inane Perspective, Our Land is Our Life. That's the title of this work. Um, for a long time, there was no Clinkett pr uh, pronunciation of the creek here. It was just no name creek. And it already had a name. It had a Clinkett name. So um, I, I find that uh, uh, place names are so important and they're, they're useful. And they, they teach us things and they tell us things. And, and um, a lot of our communities, um, when those names are removed, <clears throat> it's, um, yeah, it's part of the eraser. So uh, This is God Complex, and it's based on um, the systematic violence towards brown, uh, brown and black lives in, in U.S., and I think it's an extension of that colonial violence that was in place. Um, so this is a riot cop made out of porcelain. We Dreamt Deaf. This is a uh, work based in similar context to The Wolf, but more on climate change. This bear was shot uh, by a non-indigenous sport hunter in the 60s in Shishmaroff. Shishmaroff is um, falling back into the ocean right now based on climate change. And polar bears are one of the, um, I, su I suppose, I iconic um, animals that are affected by this with the loss of sea ice. Um, this is another extension of the Imaginary Indian series. This is a eight foot totem. And then <clears throat> Re recently I was part of a um, dugout canoe. I do a lot of culture work in my community as well, besides some of this work that I was sharing with you guys. Uh, I teach and um, also I, I teach jewelry and then some wood carving and stuff. But this was a 28 foot Northern style dugout that we completed last year. There was five of us. We worked with Steve Brown. Um, and I'm just gonna show you some of the processes. It took us about 10 months to create. This was the first canoe that I was able to take part on, so I was really grateful to be a part of it. Uh, I think we're gonna put it in the water next week. It still hasn't gone in. Um, one thing I did do is uh, see Alaska Heritage was um, funders, grant funders for this, and. Um, uh, I talked them into scanning the canoe before and after we steamed it, so I'm going to just show you how much it opened up. Let's see, will that play? That's the carving shed in Sitka. This is before. You see the gunnels are tucked in. I think we opened this canoe up 14 inches, and we could have gone more, but that's just kind of where we, that's, that's what we were hoping for. Um, it was a, not a very great log to work with, so we spent a lot of time doing patches. The red is after, this, after the steam, so you can see the, the slice through there, the changes. I think it's really, really a <coughs> wonderful information to see it in digital form and to, and to see the transformation that happens through that process. Uh, this is the log before and then this is after. One thing that happened was uh, a photo a day was taken of the process and I'm just going to play that for you real quick. That's it. So, <clears throat> how are we doing on time? I guess I'll wrap it up. Are we going to do questions now or after? Okay. Thank you. Good news.